In proton NMR, the area under each peak corresponds to the number of hydrogen atoms that are associated with that peak. This is referred to as integration. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to analyze the integrals of an NMR spectrum. This is an NMR spectrum that has the integral values written on it. The integral values are these large numbers uh, that are oftentimes written adjacent to their respective peaks. Sometimes the integral values are written underneath peaks. Sometimes integral values are just tabulated along side of the spectrum. You could see it in any one of those different formats. And we're going to analyze the integral values in this particular spectrum, although it is kind of tricky, so I'm not going to start with that one. We're going to start with a simpler example. I don't have an NMR spectrum to show you for this one, but we're going to imagine this is an NMR spectrum that has two peaks. So there's going to be peak number one and there's going to be peak number two. And let's say that when this was integrated, peak number one worked out to have an integral of 333 and peak number two worked out to have an integral of 1000. Let's analyze these integrals. So the first thing I want to point out to you is that the integrals only correspond to the number of hydrogen atoms. They are not equal to the number of hydrogen atoms. So this is not saying that peak number two is coming from 1,000 hydrogens. This peak right here is not coming from 412 hydrogens. These numbers just simply represent the area under the peak in units that we, you know, we don't know. So what our job is to do here is to recognize that these integrals are representing the relative ratio of the hydrogen atoms in each one of these peaks. And our job is to turn this ratio into numbers that are more reasonable for the number of hydrogen atoms that we would expect in a molecule. So these integrals or these areas are telling us that peak number one has an area of 333 and peak number two has an area of 1000. So this is like the ratio of the size of peak number one to peak number two. And this is also a ratio of the number of hydrogen atoms in peak number one relative to the number of hydrogen atoms in peak number two. The way that we interpret or analyze this integral data is by taking or trying to take these numbers and turn them into numbers that are more reasonable for a molecule. Our first step in doing that is to look at all of the numbers in our integrals, decide which one is the smallest, numerically the smallest, and we're going to divide everything by that small number. So our goal here is really we're just trying to reduce this ratio down to something that makes a little bit more sense um, in terms of how many hydrogen atoms we would expect in a molecule. When we divide everything by 333, we end up getting a ratio that works out pretty perfect. If I'm on my calculator and I do this exactly, it's 1 to 3.00. So this is telling us that peak number 1 is associated with one hydrogen atom, and peak number 2 is associated with three hydrogen atoms. Now this does not necessarily mean that there is exactly one hydrogen atom associated with peak one and exactly three hydrogen atoms associated with peak two. Another option would be for peak number one to be associated to two hydrogen atoms and peak number two to be associated with six hydrogen atoms because that two to six has the same ratio. Or it could be three hydrogen atoms to nine hydrogen atoms and hopefully you get the idea. This is just gonna give us the relative ratio of the hydrogen atoms in peak one to the hydrogen atoms in peak two. It's gonna be our job to use other type of spectroscopy such as mass spec to determine the exact number of hydrogen atoms in this molecule. If we know the exact number of hydrogen atoms, we would be able to correctly identify which one of these ratios was the true ratio of hydrogens in the molecule. Let's take a look at this spectrum over here with its integrals. Again, our job is to look at all of the integrals, find the one that is the smallest, and divide all of the integrals by that small number. So again, we're trying to turn these into normal numbers. Um, 281 divided by 281 is 1. 400, 404 divided by 281 is 1.4, and 412 is also going to be 1.4. So these integrals don't work out to be perfect numbers, which is actually really normal when you're looking at real data. 
What do we do with these 1.4 numbers? If the numbers are pretty close to one, like if this was 1.1, I'd probably feel comfortable rounding it to one. But since this number is close to one and a half, it's not really close to one and it's not really close to two, I don't feel very comfortable rounding these numbers. So what I'm gonna do in my next step is multiply all of these numbers by two. Again, if I'm doing the same thing mathematically to all of these numbers, I'm not disrupting the ratio. I am maintaining the ratio, just kind of messing with the numbers mathematically to get them to work out to something more reasonable. 2.8 is close to three. I feel more comfortable rounding this number up to three. When you're analyzing integrals in NMR, as I said, the numbers are a lot of times gonna be kind of squishy. They're not gonna work out to really nice numbers and you're gonna have to kind of use a little bit of intuition. Also maybe use mass spec data that could help you determine an appropriate number of hydrogen atoms for the molecule and just kind of mathematically, you know, go back and forth with these numbers until you get a set that seems reasonable. For this particular um, spectrum, integrals of two to three to three, that's a very reasonable set of uh, integrals. And we've already spent quite a bit of time analyzing this spectrum. So we already know, we've already determined that this peak that is around four, that is associated with the CH2. So an integral of two is perfect. And um, this this peak right here, which is around two, that's associated with the CH3 group. So that integral is perfect as well. And then our peak that's around one, that is associated with this CH3 group. So that worked out to be perfect as well. However, for this particular molecule, there isn't really any way, uh, if we didn't have this sort of reference, we wouldn't know if the true ratio was two to three to three or if the ratio was four to six to six, or if the ratio was eight to 12 to 12, you know, we just, we don't have any way of knowing that by looking at just the NMR all by itself. We need a little bit extra information such as the mass spec to help us figure out which of these ratios is accurate.